Hi, I'm Peter Lloyd. Welcome to the Small Shed. This Saturday we're dealing with a leak, and that's coming up next. <laughs> Now you may recall a couple of weeks ago I mentioned that uh, my nemesis was water. I always seem to have problems with plumbing and in this case it looks like I've got a fairly major problem. Woke up this morning and we've got a lot of water running down the wall opposite the uh, front door which is where the um, bathroom is oversails the front of the garage. So I'm going to take the roof out and have a look and see what's going on in there. Um, First of all I'm going to unbox a few things that have arrived during the week and see what's uh, what's come in and then we'll go out and have a look at the roof and see what's going on inside. Right well we've got three things to unbox this week that have arrived during the week. This one's pretty heavy from Falcon Workshop Supplies. I think it's screws for my bench that I'm making I'm not sure. into it. A box within a box. Yes, 125 mil screws. These are for the bench that's coming up in a future video. Something I'm doing via men in sheds really, but it's uh, these are the parts for it here. It's um, a couple of benches for a care home by us. I'm just starting to uh, cut and round to the bits for it. And these are the fixing screws that will fix through the sides into the back and fix the legs on. So that's a start. And this arrived this morning, I don't know what this one is. Ah yes, this is a circle cutter I've ordered. It's one of these that drills a hole in the centre and then you've got two cutting bits that you can slide out to adjust. That's to cut the holes in the Perspex blast gates that I'm just working on at the moment. They um, Got to have a hole cut in that part that's the equivalent of the outlet. These gates are going to fit inside um, that part there, and I need a hole to match the hole on the extract. So that's what that one's for. That will come up in a, the dust extraction video. So that's those. And then finally, there's a big parcel that arrived in the middle of the week, and I've been a good boy and not unwrapped it as yet. Ah, we get. And that's the Triton uh, belt and spindle sander. So we'll. It's extremely heavy. I don't know what's in that one, but that is very heavy. Everything's collapsing in the workshop. So there's a box. Let me just move the camera a bit. Just have a look at 
be the first thing I normally do since I have the capsule router and that's to make sure it works before I get in too deep because uh, there's not a lot of point in unwrapping something if it's not going to work. So I'll we'll just plug that in. I suppose really I should read the manual first. But On a switch. Well, at least the thing works. So um, I'll come back to that later on. Uh, I know it works now, and I'll give it a, a run for a bit and let you know how I get on with it later on. Um, but really, I had to get on and move outside. So the first thing I needed to do was take down the ceiling that I'd only just put up about six months ago. Um, and of course all the timber I'd bought in for a next project is stacked right in the way, as all of these things are. Uh, and then I just got a saw and hacked out the plasterboard that was underneath and retaining all the insulation in the floor void. Uh, obviously that was pretty wet as well so that's been replaced when I put it back together um, but it just allowed me to get in and see one of the biggest problems is access it's almost impossible to get at it once I could get up there I found that it wasn't a, a hot or a cold feed pipe which was what I was dreading. Um, it was actually the waste pipe had come away. You can just see it moving there. Waste pipe had come away uh, and probably again, although it was done 25 years ago, it was my own fault, I think, um, that the pipe was probably about half an inch to an inch too long. And there had been a little bit of tension on the joint with the waste trap and that had meant that it had just sprung. As I say, it's, it's taken a long while to do to get to that point, but these things eventually find you out, I'm fairly sure. So really, I then just cut a new piece of pipe, slightly longer. It's important to clear all the burrs off the end of the pipe, certainly inside as well as outside, um, so that you don't catch the hairs and bits and pieces that go down in the water when it's... Uh, the basin's emptying because that's when you get clogging up it, it tends to gather and catch on the burrs of uh, plastic so it needs to be cleaned off just put it all back together then and um, make up a new section which again was quite difficult to get in because there was so little room um, it, it just had to be, in fact I had to cut another half an inch off it because it wouldn't quite fit back through the hole. Um, but once I got that the right length, um, it was fitted back in, tightened up, but you can see where you're working behind pipes up in the void. And then once that was fitted, uh, I put the insulation back in, cut a new panel of plasterboard, and then sealed it all up. It's a little bit wet on the wall but it's drying out slowly now. Put the uh, plastic back and the job's finished. Well I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it took about three or four days in all to finish it when I uh, finally got round to getting it sorted. It's slowly drying out now. Uh, the one thing I'm grateful for is that when I put the cladding up about six months ago uh, I did leave it done with screws rather than the stainless steel nails you can get because it has allowed me to take it down and put it back up without any fuss. Um, if there's any lesson to be learned, it's not to be too clever with these things. I put all the plumbing into the floor void, running pipes across joists, uh, and it's just been an absolute nightmare to get in there, to reach over and above hot and cold pipes to get at the waste pipe itself um, in an area that I know is vulnerable to frost. When we had the 
the very bad winter where we were getting down to minus 15. Um, I had a problem in those days as well with it where it burst the pipe. Um, and the only good thing about that is, of course, that it goes onto the drive instead of in the house. So there's no real damage, but uh, it's still a pain to sort out. So if you are doing anything like that, don't hide all the plumbing in the floor void. It's just a total waste of time. I could just as easily have put the plumbing for the wastes and the pipe work through the vanity unit in the bathroom, out through the side, and it would have left about six inches or something like that, 150 mil of pipe that I would need to duct before it hit the side of the bath and it could go down behind the bath uh, in the bath panel in that void there. So, you know, it's it's just made a problem for myself that has and a lesson to be learned in there in the future. I hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to seeing you next week when hopefully we won't be underwater and I'll see you then. Bye.